Welcome to Gold Star Classroom, the podcast where our panelists go back to school. We'll grade them on their answers to a variety of general knowledge and trivia questions. They don't know what we're going to ask, and we don't know what they're going to say. The student with the highest grade at the end of the class will win the coveted classroom prize, the Golden Banana. I'm your host and headmaster, Professor Jerry Jaffe. Welcome to today's Gold Star Classroom. I'm your host and professor, Dr. Jerry Jaffe. It's my pleasure to introduce today's students. On my right, all the way from Tokyo, Japan, and the voice of the Black Loco Roco, Jeff Geddert. Hey, it's good to be here. Hey, we're glad for you to be here, Mr. Geddert. On my left, the editor of TED.com, Emily McManus. Also, privilege, privilege to be here. Oh, we're glad you made it to class today, Emily. Thank We've you. We've been missing you. <laughs> and sitting directly across from me at the table is sustenance delivery specialist from Toledo, Ohio, Jeff Head. I forgot to bring my homework. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate for you because I'm going to be asking all of you a variety of general knowledge, science, and trivia questions, and I will be grading your answers, Mr. Head. Uh-oh. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm in trouble now. Sometimes kids will say the dog ate their homework, although caveman children might have said the dinosaur ate their homework. Is that a segue? Are you setting something up? <laughs> I feel like we're being segued. <laughs> Is the first question about fossils? Speaking of segues, <laughs> there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what does the word dinosaur actually mean? Tyrannosaurus Tyrannosaur rex means terrible, or uh, no, no, king of the. Jungle? Sir, Isn't it a terrible jungle? lizard? King of the, yeah, it was King of the George. We George. have George of the Jungle. George Curi the jungle. Curious yes. George. Curious no. George. And uh, Dino... Terrible Lizard. Jeff Geddard is going with Terrible Lizard. The dino was... No, that was... that was. I have no idea. Sour? I've got no other word to compare it to. Like I only know yeah. Dino Burgers. Sor, Saurian. <laughs> and Dino Burger would be a horrible name for a meal due to the fact that Dino comes from the Greek word for terrible. Terrible lizard. Correct. You, oh. Yeah, so what did you think terrible lizard? You thought it was Tyrannosaurus rex. Was but he did get to I, terrible. One of those you was terrible there. lizard. Yeah, you did no, get no, to no, terrible. I, in fact, you did. Yes. For uttering the words terrible lizard, you have already earned the first gold star of the class. That's uh, terrible. Well wow. done, Mr. Gale. Well, we tried to distract him. From yeah, I guess. I like answer. Curious George myself. <laughs> I know, I was He's there. Cool. When was the word dinosaur coined? 1942. Jurassic it, period. Just, just this minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three completely different answers. 1942, just this minute, and the Jurassic period. Uh, none of which are correct. <laughs> no, this would, be, would have been coined when dinosaurs were first excavated and determined to be dinosaurs. So I'm guessing like 200 years ago? Darwin times. The determined to be dinosaurs is a very important part of the story since fossils have been identified for thousands of years, in fact. Mm. They're one of the great mysteries of natural history throughout the centuries is what are fossils, what are they made of, where do they come from, what do they represent. Undoubtedly numerous mythical creatures, certainly dragons, hmm. are at least partially derived from fossils. Sure. He's finding a big tooth, like 60 yes. long yards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Here be dragons. Um, but then uh, about 200 years ago, shall we say the early 1800s, hey. naturalists started looking at fossils again and reinterpreting them. Mm -hmm. The actual word dinosaur was coined by a very famous paleontologist. Who hated lizards. Usually the... <laughs> They're terrible. He was afraid oh. of them. Formally named in 1842 by... Anyone know the name other than Darwin? Oh, oh, a oh. A famous paleontologist from the 1840s? He was Scottish. Wasn't there like a, a competitor of Darwin's? It, it was another prominent naturalist and scientist. Oh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Oh. Nice, Frost, nice try, however. Forrest? Oh, this is, I, 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 I know like right. a letter out of this Robert guy's name, somebody? but I, I know a lot he of He did. Um, yeah. He was Robert a contemporary somebody. of... Darwin, and he did endorse the idea of evolution and natural selection, but he did argue about the details. So mm. he was known for arguing it with and disagreeing with Darwin. So not Spencer, not... No. Uh, no. Oh, oh. 
Uh, though it's not Robert, his first name does begin with an R, if that's any kind of clue worth mentioning. Sir Richard Owen. Randy? Sir Richard Owen. Richard. You told me, and then it was still on Randy. You were still on Randy. Oh. Well, we're Richard. not. we don't have time to psychoanalyze you right now, Emily. <laughs> so we'll carry on. That's the whole reason I came here. <laughs> might take months. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, it might. Besides uh, being known in the day for his cantankerous personality and argumentativeness, he is also famous for helping to establish the London Natural History Museum, of which he was the first director. Who is Jimmy Carter? No. Uh, Sir Richard uh, Owen. Oh, my bad. We're still oh, wait, he's the Richard same guy? Owen. Yes. Oh, so the answer to the second question is the answer to the first question. Well, I was elaborating on his many oh, accomplishments. I, th- I was all like, woo! Got this one. <laughs> Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Wasn't Jimmy Carter the president? There in, was a president of the United States of the name Jimmy Carter. Do I get a gold star for that? No. No. Because <laughs> Jeff Getter just said that himself 90 seconds ago. So I'll take a green star. <laughs> People are always begging for stars around here. <laughs> I'll decide who gets a star and when. Begging for psychoanalysis. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now. I came for one thing. So much she needs help. help. <laughs> Your grades so far are microscopic, to say the least. But I'd like to give you an opportunity to improve your grades. Macroscopic, to say the most. To s- <laughs> <laughs> Plus one point to Jeff, who is now failing with a grade one point higher than Emily or Jeff Head's grade. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to improve your grade by asking you another dinosaur question. Great. We're awesome. These. Bring it on. Yeah. When did dinosaurs live? Or you could rephrase that in, when did they go extinct? Do you want a, a name of a period or you want years? Like I think if we used years, it would be more listener friendly. Yeah. Uh, but not the exact year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 1842. <laughs> Is this going to be a trick question because there's actually some offshoot of the dinosaurs that is still in existence with us today? We could very well ask the question, are there offshoots of dinosaurs that are still with us today? The alligator? Mm -hmm. Uh, The The crocodilians are sometimes listed as, if you'll let me use this phrase casually, cousins to dinosaurs, but not direct descendants. No no gold star for that either. No, no, no. no. In fact, there's a very misleading thing, if anyone happens to know, in calling dinosaurs terrible lizards. And that is... They're actually very kind people. They were thoughtful lizards. <laughs> They're thoughtful. birds. Uh, well, they are, there has been recent taxonomical rearrangements of dinosaurs, and they are thought to be more closely related to birds than to lizards. In fact, they are not thought to have been, technically speaking, lizards at all. Wow. So they're just terrible. Yeah, no, they're just terrible. Yes, they were just terrible. Just dinos. Um, They are more considered a type of reptile, which makes them cousins to crocodiles. Hmm. And modern birds are sometimes described as their descendants. (laughs) Although no dinosaurs in the strict historic sense of the word are considered to still be existing now. So we got them all. Yes. Yeah. We got them all. So, when did, so all. the question is, when did they go extinct? Was it when? 65 yes. million years ago? We have a bid on the table of 65 million years ago. I'm holding. Yes, no. Million. Come on, you guys. What's uh, the over-under on 65 million? 50 million. Is this like the price is million? right? <laughs> <laughs> you can bid one year. <laughs> 65 I, million know, and one. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 65 million and two. <laughs> <laughs> well, by virtue of saying 65 million and two, Jeff Head is the closest. There you are. All right. Nice. Although Emily Ooh. is uh, conversationally correct. It is usually rounded off to 65 million or 66 million years, approximately, is when the extinction event occurred. Plus nice. the two years that it took the news to get out. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know about this so-called extinction event of the dinosaurs? Oh, it was an awesome comet in the middle of South America. It was so rad. And it, sorry, go on. Well, I think it was a meteor. Oh, right. What, what is it, the comet, the meteor, yeah. asteroid? Yes. It what was, is the difference between a look, comet, a meteor, well, and an asteroid? Okay, that's the next topic, but it was a meteor that, cra- that hit the peninsula of Mexico. Gotcha. Right. It is uh, the Yucatan Peninsula is where the crater that is believed to be associated with the extinction event of the dinosaurs is found. If, I, know, I know what comet is. What's a comet? 
Well, Comet comes in a little jar and you scour dishes with it. There we go. Comet. And an enormous thing. bottle Come crashed on. into Mexico. I'd like to just, <laughs> it was my school, the only school that had that time. I would like to clarify for the sake of the listeners that Comet Cleanser is in no way a sponsor of the show, <laughs> nor endorses any of these comments. Yet, but you never know. <laughs> little product placement. This rock, be it Comet, Asteroid, Meteor, how big was it? Very. Uh, well, very is a relative term. Can you estimate its size? The, the size of uh, Idaho. We have one vote for the size of Idaho. I'm going to guess it was two miles across. We have a vote for two miles across. That's the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> At certain points, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and had about the same population, I suspect. <laughs> uh, one mile across. I'm just going to throw it out there. The approximate estimated size of the comet that struck the Earth and led Meteor. to the extinction of the dinosaurs was approximately 10 kilometers. So we say about How maybe... How many Idahos is that? <laughs> it's a That's one a and a half Rhode Islands. fraction of, a, of an Idaho. Yeah, yeah one an and Idaho. a half Rhode Islands. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well done, I guess. I suppose... How often do you suppose this approximately five to six mile wide asteroid, how often do asteroids of that size strike the Earth? Not often enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have in my notes before me the typical statistics for debris that falls from space and hits the Earth, because mm. debris does fall every day from space and hit the Earth. Mm. Micrometeorites Correct. are thousands times It is a day. estimated mm. that uh, debris of the size of about one millimeter fall about once every 30 seconds. Wow. Wow. Does it, and, and we mean like fall like hit the earth or fall and go to... It and means entering the atmosphere. The atmosphere. Right. And as you're implying, if things are sufficiently small, they are probably destroyed while in the atmosphere. That's my guess, because you would notice. Whereas the asteroid yeah. which extinguished the dinosaurs... Survived the atmosphere and actually struck the Earth. It did yeah. strike the planet. It did surface. Strike. Yes, that's why there's a crater. And in addition to all the other damage associated with that, that is estimated that the largest tsunami known to history occurred. Oh. Also, as a result of that comet. Wow. So that's a, that's pretty much every wave, land right? mass available uh, was struck by water wow. within a couple of days of that striking. Do we know if? Mm -hmm. At that point, was it the uh, Pangaea supercontinent where they're all together? It was not the Pangaea supercontinent, but it was far enough back in time that it was not the arrangement of continents that we're familiar with now. Hmm. So if you do look up recreations of it, and there are many videos on the internet now that show the what it, a projection of what it must be like, must have been like. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can see what the landmass configuration probably was. I see. But it wasn't the full-on Pangaea. Yeah, but, we weren't like all crunched but together. But it wasn't the map that you would recognize today either. Well, it's covered yeah. in dinosaurs. Yes. Yeah, and meteors. It's, hey. Yes, that's true. Uh, what is, there's, we, have, yeah, we now have several topics on the table. <laughs> yeah. But it seems to me that we can't let go of the comet versus asteroid but debate. We, I can't let it lie. Meteor. Versus meteor. So what, well, we have to start somewhere. So first of all, what is an asteroid? Asteroid is a rock that hurtles through space. An asteroid, Emily, Jeff Head? I agree. Yeah. Uh, that is, that would be a partial credit for that answer. Yay. But an asteroid has a very particular feature. Tail. It's a comet. Com comets have tail. Oh, Com what does an asteroid oh, have? Nice. It's icy. No. It right. has a space you may have heard this expression. You may have heard this expression either in science or science fiction. The asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is mm. a large ring of asteroids between Mars and Jupiter. Like, so from the mm -hmm. sun, there are three mm -hmm. solid planets, and then an asteroid belt, and then three gas planets. Your, your estimation is correct, although there are four solid well, I'm planets. Sorry, I'm sorry, from the sun. My very sorry. earnest ma just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Served us nine and then pickles, but you can't say pickles anymore. But you can still get a gold star. All right. There you go. And the All Kuiper right. Belt. Yes. Yeah. 
But the general characterization of these rocky formations that orbit the Sun in a relatively fixed orbits in the approximate area between Mars and Jupiter, and of course between space being three-dimensional and it's not an exact, like some of them are a little closer and some are a little further. So if it's a rock that's not in that belt, it's not an asteroid? Correct. Or, or if it's not from that belt. So asteroids don't hit the Earth. They just are always around. No, an belt. asteroid can hit the Earth. Oh, you're and, killing me. <laughs> but before I explain why, what's a comet? A ball of ice. That well, well, it can, it can be ice or rock, but a ball of solid matter that With an icy space. tail. With a tail. space. Got a tail. It does have a tail, though the tail is not icy. Gaseous. It it is more gaseous. Uh, comets are said to also orbit the sun, but on much larger orbits. So they go out of our immediate nine-planet solar system and then come back. So like Halley's comet does circle the sun. That's a comet. But on a 70, 75-year cycle. Hmm. Um, and comets, because they have cycle. such large orbits. And they're so small in their mass. It's an 86-year cycle. I'm sorry, I just ate Haley's comment. I just had to say that. You go on ahead. So, nice. what, do you want another gold star? She Is that your point? point? <laughs> She's working. She's yeah. 86. 86, okay. You get 86 points for that. Thanks, man. You are you earned it. Don't thank me. <laughs> I'm an objective evaluator. Sorry, I, yes. I interrupted you. So, comets have less stable orbits, so they can be changeable. Oh. They're not always clockwork like the oh. comet is. And so the tail of a comet is, is, is a, I don't quite say an optical illusion, but it's something that you see from Earth. When a comet gets near the sun, part of its surface melts. Because and it's an icy tail. <laughs> it's an icy body that has evaporating mass that is then reflected from the sun, and we see it. So the tail itself is not ice. Okay. It's, it's, like, it's, it's snow. <laughs> it's snow is solid. It is gaseous. Gassy snow. Gaseous snow. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's a ticket. Gaseous snow is, of course, what happens when you eat Mexican food in the points. mountains. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point sharing, however. Darn it. Only I can give out points. I really tried. He's got all the power. For even, for even yeah. attempting to give him points, I'm taking away your 86 ah. points. Oh. 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 No, Brutal. No. It's, it's, it's fair. But it's the, the next person who says fair. something intelligent will get them all. It's like Monopoly. I'm putting all the points in the middle. The first person to land on go is getting all the points from Emily. So that's a comet and an asteroid. What then is a meteor? A meteor is a solid body that falls and strikes the Earth. Agree or disagree, students? Versus a meteorite. Meteorite's a female meteor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lady meteor. It's got the little bow. Exactly, pink bow in the hair. Pink bow in yeah. the hair, yeah, <laughs> meteorite. Lipstick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slightly different sound effect. Yeah, sound. The words meteor and meteorite are used to describe the mass that is falling to the Earth. So basically, if it's in the sky, it's a meteor. And when it hits the ground, it's a meteorite. It's a meteorite. And then if you excavate the rocks and study them as a scientist or geologist might, they sometimes use the word meteoroid. Mm. Wow. Uh, meteoroid. So we could say that should an asteroid or a comet enter our atmosphere and hit the ground, then they are also becoming meteoroid material. Meteors and, and meteorites and meteoroids. They go through these phases. Now as a teacher, I would never gamble, but if I were going to gamble, I would bet almost any amount of money that should any astrophysicist hear this, I will get an email. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is my prediction. <laughs> Now, I'd like to return to these different sizes of matter just to review because it's kind of interesting. So about once every 30 seconds, a millimeter-sized dust particle enters our atmosphere. Uh, and then it, on average, the bigger it is, the less often it occurs. Sure. So something the size of what struck, of what affected the dinosaurs, something several miles across, is relatively rare, certainly in the scale of human history, about once every 100 million years. Mm. Hmm. Now, if you're, uh, if you're a uh, bookie taking odds, it's been over 50 million years since the last time it happened. Yeah. So you could argue that one's we're only, due. We're only 35 million years <laughs> away. Mm. Every million years that goes by, the odds go up that it's going to happen eventually. Not long from now. No. 
um, use some other increments, something about the size of a meter, so that would be a small refrigerator, enters the atmosphere about once a year. Wow. But those mm. are still sufficiently small that the doesn't usually reach the ground, burns okay. up in the atmosphere. You can see I'm worried about this. Well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make you even more worried Duh. before the next 90 seconds are over. <laughs> um, something the size of 10 meters about every 10 years, and usually also burst in air, although in a much more spectacular fashion due to having more mass. Nice. And such oh. a thing just happened in Russia, February 15th in the year 2013. Oh. There was just such a meteor burst in the air over several Russian cities. The dash cam meteor. Is that what it's called? That's the one that they found on all the dash cams. Yes, there's a lot of video footage now. It's beautiful. On YouTube, on the internet. Yeah, and did they like re reproduce its trajectory they based were, on the dash cams? They were able to use the mm -hmm. footage, yeah. It awesome. did damage, I think, in six different cities, and no one was killed, thankfully. There were, however, many minor injuries, broken glass, hmm. falling debris, maybe, maybe in the thousands um, throughout the cities. And there was damage done, possibly estimated to around $30 million worth of damage. That's nothing to sneeze at, but for comparison, the amount of damage caused by Hurricane Katrina is over $80 billion. Yeah. So wow. as far as natural disasters go, it was thankfully not yes. hmm. a horrible one. Yeah. Uh, one more increment. Something 100 meters across uh, falls about once every 1,000 years. And just such a thing fell over Russia in the year 1908. And it uh, landed in a uh, sort of empty country space, flattening several kilometers worth of trees. Uh, we're not sure if there are any fatalities because it was not a population center. So there mm. certainly could have been hunters, trappers, indigenous people in the woods. Wow. But there was no documented, maybe, confirmed maybe, deaths from it. Maybe a Bigfoot. We, we could have lost a Bigfoot or two. <laughs> yeah. um, which is why there's, no one has sighted one since 1908. 1908? That explains it. Yeah. Yes, another mystery solved. There, there points extinct. goes to Jeff Head. <laughs> 86 now. points oh, for Jeff Head. Well, Big, Bigfoot point. For the Sasquatch hypothesis. <laughs> 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 Physicists are going to love that. By the way, you, the, the yeah. Sasquatch hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, just, we're racking up points right there. The um, we're racking up emails. <laughs> and even with so much matter falling from the sky, mm -hmm. the Earth is mostly water as well. So, statistically, 75, 80 percent of the stuff that falls. No, the Earth is mostly covered in water. Thank you for your phraseology. Minus five points for smart aleckness. Thank you. Uh, but plus four for Very accuracy. Much. Yes. You get something. So you get a net loss of minus one. <laughs> what? What would you reckon no, are the it. odds of being killed by falling meteor? Enormously small. Like one in one with a whole bunch of zeros <laughs> behind it. Uh, Jeff Head, agree or disagree with Mr. Gettard's estimate? I'm going to say four out of a Googleplex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like a Google yeah, or a Googleplex yeah. type of number. Plus two. Okay. Oh, plus two. <laughs> yeah. oh. Back to that kind of bidding, are we? Yeah. <laughs> well, naturally, because it's such a rare occurrence, it becomes an odd, abstract thing to calculate. So you will see different calculations. I'd say there's not a definitive answer to this question. Mm. Depends on whose textbook you buy. Yes, but I will say a common figure that you will see is one in two hundred and fifty thousand. Really? That seems yeah. that seems bad. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's not as bad as the dinosaur numbers. Killed but by a meteorite? That you would be killed by a meteor. meteor. Yeah, meteor. Wow. Well, well meteor, meteorite would be meteor striking, striking you. you. Yes. Yeah. I'm buying a safety helmet. <laughs> a meteor. Yeah, I'm, I'm staying inside now. <laughs> OSHA approved. Uh, apparently, <laughs> the math that goes into that takes into account extinction events, like. Even though there's oh, only yeah. a one in a million yeah. year chance of a huge catastrophe occurring, it, should it occur, a lot of people we'll would be killed. All be killed. Yes. And if it, yes. like if it causes a tidal wave, and the tidal yeah. wave yes. kills people. Yes. Yeah. So it's sort of a skewed number because the odds of it happening, it's like a slightly separate calculation. But then if you say should it happen, then the it, odds uh, of dying that way. So that's why it seems. More likely than it probably is. I see. Don't go to I Vegas. See. That makes no sense. To yeah, me. you wouldn't want to do that in Vegas. What's the chance of being hit by a meter in Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this: What are the chances of being hit by man-made junk and debris from space? Probably not as bad as being hit by man-made junk and debris in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, that's where people leave their debris and junk. Mm -hmm, throw it at Jeff. We do have an estimated figure. How many objects currently circling the Earth are man-made and larger than 10 centimeters? Seven. No, Seven? it's a bunch. It's oh. all kinds of like space program garbage that they didn't bother to... Space junk is man-made detritus circling the Earth. 94% of what is currently circling the Earth is man-made. Wow. You're welcome. And large-ish objects of over 10 centimeters in size uh, number over 19,000. That's more than seven. That's way more than seven. That's like a lot eight more, than, more seven. than seven. And if you go a little smaller, um, there's tens of millions of like particles, dust, flakes. Like washers and screws. Not, and yes. Uh, but they're all traveling at like 50,000 miles an hour. <laughs> but so <laughs> would you be if you were there. I mean, it would just be like nothing. Yeah. Right? If we're going the same direction, that's no problem. Yeah. Ooh, ah, yeah. there's the key. The, this is something that uh, the former space shuttles and the current space station had had to and have to watch out for. Like they had to track all of this debris because even particles can do damage to the surface and the shields and the outer layers of the... It's got glass windows. <laughs> <laughs> we need a giant vacuum cleaner to go up there and get rid of all that stuff. Yeah. Ship it to the moon. I would watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, the study of dinosaurs is sometimes referred to as a historical science because dinosaurs per se don't exist. So what we know about them is deduced through historical evidence. Mm. And because of that, though we do know a lot, certainly, there are things we don't know. And That's what Rumsfeld said. <laughs> well, fortunately, he is not under scrutiny at this time. <laughs> but what is under scrutiny at this time is, how did dinosaurs have sex? Hmm. Because they're birds, basically. Well, or at least related to birds. Sure. Any particular kind of dinosaur? Or is this like the dinosaur that leaps up out of well, the Well, I mean, you are certainly correct that dinosaurs roamed the Earth for over 100 million years, and there were many, many different types and sizes, from tiny centipedes to huge sauropods, hmm. which are like the largest land animals known to have existed. What? I thought that was the... Uh... No, wait. I want to see what you're going to fill I know, we're blank. waiting for this uh, one. Wait, I have 86 wait, points to give away. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll there was, it was yeah. the largest dinosaur was the brontosaurus, but it's yes. no longer the brontosaurus. Doesn't it's exist. now it changed its name. It's I think it's under the witness protection program. <laughs> Sue. Yes, the um Sue. Just the one dinosaur and Johnny Cash are the only two people who <laughs> use that new, name now. When new species of any kind are discovered, the scientist who discovers them names them. Mm -hmm. And what happened was when the Brontosaurus was named, unbeknownst to that scientist. Another guy a couple years earlier had discovered the same species but called it something else. Uh -huh. And that went unnoticed for like a couple of generations. And then relatively recently, by the 90s certainly, it's no longer officially known as a brontosaurus. Although I would say conversationally it's in no way wrong to use the word brontosaurus. But that is not the technical name for it. Everything anymore. I learned in school is wrong. Everything. Correct. Pluto, brontosaurus is egalitarian principles. Only things you learned in school. Yes. <laughs> People are rewarded based on the merit of school. their work. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> there are... <laughs> oh. per, okay, so we don't know very much about dinosaur sex. There are three specific problems that have to be deduced with very little evidence. Only three? I have a lot more. <laughs> well, what yeah. are your problems? Well, I don't oh, you need your personal problems, yes. <laughs> I told you we're not here to psychoanalyze the students. That's right. Um, first of all... Uh, genital organs are soft tissue, and there has basically never been a case. It's very rare, though not impossible, for soft tissues to become fossilized. Uh -huh. So there has not been any dinosaur genitalia mm. fossils found as of yet. I believe there may be like one or two that are argued about, mm -hmm. mm. but just in general, there's really no genital fossils. So that makes it harder to paint a picture yeah. about what's going Certainly. on. Uh, Easier to spread rumors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Plus five points for strategic use of the word spread. <laughs> now. That's not my intention. <laughs> okay, minus five points for it, admitting that that oh, was not your intention. Uh... Um, first of all, dinosaurs could be not uh, quite large, so there's an issue of body crushing weight mm -hmm. with the larger dinosaurs. Um, and also, dinosaurs tended to be the same size regardless of their gender. 
So most hmm. animals, though not all in the animal kingdom, one or the other is larger, and that actually helps with mating issues because it helps the weight crushing problem. It helps with dating too. It can help with dating, depending on who you date. Determining who to date. Indeed. I want a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> a dinosaur you can have one. Of, this, oh, okay. of the same mass as you? <laughs> to date. Yeah. To date, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, many dinosaurs had huge tails, and that is an issue where what happens to the tails. Yeah. Because they're sort of in the way. Uh, or, or spinal plates. Well, that's the third problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some dinosaurs are known to have spikes, plates, barbs. Yeah. Sometimes referred Forms. to as the porcupine problem. Ah, how do they do it? Yeah, there's more pressing issues here. <laughs> <laughs> so now you want to, now Jeff had once a porcupine instead uh, of a dinosaur. No. <laughs> Carefully considered, no. No. <laughs> However, Emily did forecast that one of the ways that naturalists address the problem is by looking at how birds mate. Hmm. And again, there are many birds, so there's no one answer to that question. But there are some common features that many birds have. Mm -hmm. Do you, anyone know how birds mate? Or what the key features are of avian genitalia? I do not. Uh, Jeff, I know about and ducks. Can I th the ducks are something to know about. Although Can they, I just say yeah. that I am proud not to know about <laughs> avian genitalia? I think ever since we started discussing avian genitalia, Jeff Head has gotten quiet. He this wants is, an avian. <laughs> <laughs> so I, want, I want an avian dinosaur. A flying porcupine dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Most birds, though not ducks, have something called um, cloacle, cloacles or cloacus. They have what's called cloacal sex. And uh, some reptiles also have this feature, including crocodiles. A cloacal is like a um, recessed area, almost like a balloon or a bladder, that has an mm -hmm. opening on the surface. Mm -hmm. But that opening itself is not an organ of any kind. It's more just like a practical just, yeah. opening. And many simple functions, including sexual organs and um, uh, waste management, happens in that region. Multi-use. Yes, it's a like multi-use sack, porch. recessed yeah. porch. Hmm. Sure. And so what uh. most birds do is simply get those two pouches near each other and shoot genetic material at each other. I now wish I knew nothing <laughs> about <laughs> that. We love knowledge in all of its forms and permutations. All of its glorious beauty. Whew. It has been noted that the largest land animals we have now, including elephants, um, of course, mate, and they have just a way of leaning on each other so they don't bear all of the weight of their partner. So it has been suggested that dinosaurs, especially the larger ones, may have done something similar, hmm. sort of leaning on rather than, shall we say, fully mounting one's partner. Emily, was that too much of a phrase for you over there? You didn't I'm, seem to like that very I'm, much. I'm good. Just okay. keep moving on. Well, I know you're good. <laughs> I know you're good. Straight A's. You did bring up ducks, though. Why, yes, I Do you did. have the gumption and fortitude to explain what makes duck reproductive organs distinct from most other birds? <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> what do I get? <laughs> <laughs> Your very own duck. <laughs> I would give you a duck. Oh, wow. Would you, would you, Jeff Head, would you? Man. Yeah. Uh, I feel special. No, but I, I have, I have uh, been in email correspondence as a function of my job with the world's... the. Can't wait the, to hear the rest of this sentence. Yes. <laughs> the, the naturalist who published the first uh, academic paper about homosexual necrophilia in ducks. Huh. Okay. You have piqued my interest. <laughs> wow, that's, that's like the triple Miss crown. Miss McManus. It is. He uh, works at the Natural History Museum in Rotterdam, mm -hmm. and they had put up a glass-walled extension, and as an ornithologist, birds would constantly fly into the glass. And he became a specialist at knowing which kind of bird it was mm. by the sound it made. And one day, a duck hit the glass, hit the ground dead, and another duck, another male, came over and investigated and then mounted the duck for 75 minutes. And he, he took a picture and wrote about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that is top five world's greatest jobs right there. <laughs> I wonder if the federal government's going to investigate this guy. <laughs> we need a CSI show for this. Well, the specific detail about duck genitalia is that it, in fact, has a penis, mm -hmm. which most birds do not. A corkscrew-shaped penis. Which uh, extends rapidly. Which can extend rapidly. 
And some animals do have corkscrew-shaped penises. It's wondered if that allows them to stay fastened, but probably that's more just how they just create that's, penetration. It's just fun. Mm. Yes. Just fun. To do. It's a nice party trick. It's photogenic. I always thought they were just fighting. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, uh, I had to stop myself from making my next three comments, mm-hmm. though. <laughs> <laughs> no. I am going to calculate your final grades for today's class and therefore award to one of my students the coveted classroom prize, the Golden Banana. Uh-huh. Highly coveted. However, I'm waiting for this. I would life. like to give each of you one more chance to improve your grade while it's still provisional. So I'm going to go around the class and give you each one extra credit opportunity to extol your own virtues. And I will do so beginning with, on my right, Mr. Jeff Geddert. Well, I don't want to get to uh, sound too much of a brown noser here, but can I just say, can I just take a moment here to just say that I am a proud, proud citizen of the United States of America, the greatest country <laughs> in the world. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution, Mr. Gettert. You're welcome. I, I will not... <laughs> That's, that's, that statement requires no further elaboration. Mr. Head, would you like to add to the general store of human knowledge? Uh, recently, this past summer, I discovered what came first, the chicken or the egg. Hmm. Oh. And indeed, what did come first, the chicken or the egg? Well, it has to be the chicken. And why do you think chicken? Well, if the egg came first, there would be nothing to hatch the egg, and the egg would die, and there would be no more chickens. Hmm. So an egg needs a caretaker in order to hatch. So therefore, there must be... A caretaker first. A caretaker first. Um, Wrong, but thank you for... (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of beautiful. The correct answer to what came first is a proto-chicken that laid an egg egg. and cared for that egg, and then later its brother speciationed out to another branch that became later known as a chicken. But even before the proto-chicken, there were eggs. Proto-chicken eggs. Emily, is there anything you'd like to say on your own behalf or to add to the fountain of wisdom that is the Gold Star Classroom? (laughs) Well, I know a guy with this duck. (laughs) No, um, but I actually would like to tell a joke since you hadn't heard my last one. Okay. Why did the mafia kill Einstein? Why did the mafia kill Einstein? He knew too much. (laughs) <laughs> he did know too much. <laughs> you guys don't know any of my jokes. This is yeah. awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that, Emily. And it leaves it to me to award today's class prize for the highest grade. Mr. Head was in the lead until his error about differentiating between chickens and proto-chickens. And That's what did it? So close. If the golden oh. banana were only a red, white, and blue banana, Mr. Geddert would have won the classroom prize. Because red, white, and blue bananas are the best bananas. (laughs) We call them freedom bananas. Freedom bananas. So, more by default, (laughs) the winner of today's golden banana prize. As she ascends the dice. Thank you, guys. Leave it to me, your teacher, to thank you, my students, for attending today's class. Thank you. Thank you. Gold Star Classroom is written and produced by Jerry Jaffe. Our producer and engineer is Stephen Gutierrez. Original music composed and produced by Jeff Geddert. Mr. Geddert is also our assistant producer. All commentary and opinions expressed by guests of Gold Star Classroom are meant for entertainment purposes only. For Gold Star Classroom, I'm Jerry Jaffe. <laughs>